Hi there, I'm here at Embedded World 2025 on the DigiKey stand and joining me at the moment is Joe Thompson, who is the Vice President of Digital Signal Controllers Business Unit at Microchip. So thanks very much for joining us, Joe. Um, why don't you introduce yourself for us? So, like you said, my name is Joe Thompson. I've been at Microchip for 30 years now. So this is my 31st year. I was a design engineer originally, designed our first flash microcontroller a really long time ago. <laughs> um, the last 10 years I've been running our digital signal controller business unit and as part of that we also did a, a lot of our 16-bit PIC24 products and the PIC32A that we're talking about today is the natural evolution of those products. Fantastic and, and for those of our audience who perhaps aren't as familiar with Microchip, why don't you introduce the company as well? So Microchip is an embedded control solutions company started out doing mostly microcontrollers. Um, over time, we have taken on all the other things that go into an embedded control system, whether it's analog components or memories, connectivity devices. And so we have one of the, the broadest portfolios of products of, of any of the semiconductor suppliers today. I'm interested, interested to hear your thoughts on what the evolving design trends are in embedded systems development at the moment. So, Probably the easiest way to think about it is, is it's becoming more complex. And you know, traditionally, an embedded controller would do one thing really well, and it'd be isolated to that one thing. As the world has gotten more complex, the requirements have gotten more complex at the same time. So instead of just doing a, a simple lighting control, you're now having to do over-the-air updates. You have to have security because everything needs security these days. There's safety requirements. There's communication stacks for edge computing. There's support for machine learning. So all of those things wrap around the one simple application you had at the beginning, making for a very complex environment. Mm -hmm. And it's only going to get more complex. <laughs> well, Gordon Moore from Intel <coughs> probably 50 years ago said that he thought that the number of transistors should double every 18 months. And the industry has done that since then. And so whenever you double the number of transistors, you double the capabilities of those products, which makes for more complex systems. Yeah, definitely. And, and you mentioned the PIC32A, which we're going to focus on here today. So how, how does the PIC32A in, you know, empower and enable embedded systems designers to tackle these challenges in this complex world? So Microchip tends to be very core agnostic. So if you look at our 32-bit offerings, we have 32-bit offerings with MIPS cores, with ARM cores. The PIC32A is it's really the, the first offering that has a PIC core. So we've taken the, the very successful 8-bit and 16-bit PIC core and migrated that up to 32 bits mm -hmm. now. And, and so what we see is that if you look at ARM, for example, ARM started out as a microprocessor and worked its way down into the microcontroller space. Yeah. And so their focus is much more on software and data. They're very good at processing data. They have an environment that's really good for software developers. Where if you look at the PIC32A, it evolved from the 8-bit micros that were very good for hardware. So we really believe that the PIC32A is going to be a much more obvious solution for hardware designers, mm -hmm. for the ones who don't want to be invested in complex software ecosystems but want to work on the hardware for their focus, we think the PIC32A will be a good solution there. Okay, and just to, to take a step back then, how has the PIC MCU family evolved over the last you know, de three decades, leading now to the 32A? Yeah, so I think 1990 was our, our first PIC 16C5X product. So very, very simple 8-bit microcontroller, ran 200 instructions, something like that. Um, would not even be considered as a product these days. And that's migrated about every five years, we have a new generation. So we've had PIC 16s and PIC 18s in the 8-bit space. In 2005, we introduced the DS PIC 33 family and the PIC 24 family. 
And so those were our first 16-bit mm -hmm. microcontrollers, and they were a digital signal controller and a microcontroller equivalent of them, and those have been evolving since then. So in the last 20 years, we've gone through four generations of, of DSPICs. Mm -hmm. This last generation, because of the requirements for additional performance, additional memory, things like that, we decided to move it up to a 32-bit machine. So we did the DSPIC 33A that released last summer, and then in parallel, like we did with the PIC 24s, we created a DSPIC or we created a PIC 32A that is the microcontroller equivalent of the DSPIC 33A. Mm -hmm. What would you say are some of the key distinguishing features of the PIC 32A that enable embedded system developers to, to build competitive end products? So probably the, the most unique thing that we did from a microcontroller standpoint is the very high performance analog. Okay. So we like to think the world has become digital and it's just information, but the world really is still analog in nature. Yeah, yeah. Right, if it's temperature, if it's voltage, if it's time, all those are analog type functions. And so, for any system, you have to take those analog signals, convert them to digital, do whatever processing you're going to do to them, and in a lot of cases, convert them back to analog to use in the real world. Yeah. And so having very high performance analog allows you to interface in the real world much more easily. Mm. Can you expand a bit more on how the analog peripherals can improve accuracy and speed of signal measurements? So, the, the biggest one for this generation would have been the analog to digital converter. So if you look at the previous generation, we could do about three million samples per second. So, which still seems like an incredible amount. I mean, three million of something in a second. Yeah. But this generation does 40 million samples per second. And the advantage there is, is twofold. One, I can do very complex, very quick changing things that you need for like AI with that 40 mega samples per second, but you can also oversample. And so if you sample every data bit 128 times, you can get a 16-bit answer. So by oversampling, you can have a 16-bit A to D with the same exact module. And to make it easier, we've added hardware configuration bits in there where the, the microcontroller itself does all the hard work for you. Yeah. It'll do the oversampling, it'll do the averaging, and it'll just give you a 16-bit answer. So you can go either really fast at 12 bits, or you can be really accurate and still do you know, 250,000 samples per second at 16 bits. Mm. And so that provides a, a lot of capability and a lot of different dimensions for our customers. And you mentioned AI there as well. Are, are there any particular markets or end applications that the PIC 32A is best suited for? So end markets, I, I think just like microchip in general, we tend to focus on those that are more long lived. Okay. So we're especially strong in industrial, um, automotive, aerospace, medical, mm -hmm. places where they value resilience in your supply chain, not end of life in your products, having parts that will run for 10, 15, 20 years without breaking. We're, we're not as strong in the, the Chinese consumer market, okay. right? If it's something that you're gonna throw away next, you know, a year from now, we're probably not going to be the, the likely microcontroller for that case. Okay. Okay. But if you're gonna be in a, a car or industrial automation where you want to run for 20 years, that's the perfect play for microchip. Yeah. Um, Fantastic. And is there is there a development board available for the PIC 32A? Well, so th there is and there isn't, right? So we have kind of agreed as a corporation to have what we're calling curiosity boards. Okay. And these are very simple, very inexpensive boards that you can set up very quickly to do a, a lot of different functions. And then what we did was we said, well, if you have an 8-bit microcontroller, you want to have something like this. If you have an ARM microcontroller, you want to have something like this. And so what we did was we, we defined a processor interface board. And so we have this processor interface board for all our microcontrollers. And so you can take that, plug it in here, and whatever microcontroller you plugged in there will work with this board. Okay. In this case, it's a PIC32A um, processor module, 
but we also have the same thing for PIC 32Cs or PIC 18s. Mm -hmm. And then we have also clickboard headers in here for microelectronica's clickboards that allow you to add new features and capabilities. So if you want to have Wi-Fi, you want to have USB, you want to have PCI Express, you can just buy one of their little boards, plug it in here, and now this board can do that. Yeah. So this, this board is, is pretty universal and will work with all of our products. And you know a lot of what we've done in, in the last year is to make sure that the PIC32A has all the same support and tools and development environment as all of our other microcontrollers. Mm. Fantastic. And following on from that then, in, in general, how is Microchip or what investments are you making to help engineers meet the technological demands of, of today's systems? And, and what does the future of these PIC32A devices look like? So, and, and it's an, an interesting shift in, in the world. So when I started way back when, 30 years ago, we were probably three-fourths or 80% silicon designers. We, de we developed chips. Yeah. We gave them to customers and said, build something. Since then, the world has really shifted with the increasing complexity. We've got about half our resources now doing software support. So whether it's libraries, um, development ecosystems, diagnostic tools, functional safety, reference designs, we're spending over half of our resources and making sure that we have a complete solution for the customer and not just a piece of silicon. Yeah, fantastic. Well, thank you very much for sharing your insights and for bringing this along to demo. It's always a pleasure speaking with you. Oh, it's, it's been very fun. Thank That's you. It. Well, enjoy the rest of the show. Okay, thank, thank you, you very, very much. much. Um, perfect. No, that was great.